Christmas laughs. Mike Wazowski, the green one-eyed monster, was on the Monsters, Inc. laugh floor. He couldn't keep from looking at the laugh meter. It showed all the laughs the monsters had collected by telling kids jokes. The laughs were turned into energy for the city of Monstropolis. Monsters, Inc. had always been able to collect enough laughs to make sure that the monsters never had to worry about losing power. But with Christmas around the corner, it seemed as if more and more kids were on vacation. That made it harder to collect laughs. Mike worried that there wouldn't be enough power to light up the Christmas tree in the city center. It was a Monstropolis tradition that everyone looked forward to. Come on, monsters, he called out. Think funny. Mike watched one monster go through a child's closet door. When he came back onto the laugh floor, Mike looked at the canister that collected laughs. It wasn't even half full. Just then, Sully showed up. The big furry blue monster was the president of Monsters, Inc. He was also Mike's best friend. How's it going, Mike? asked Sully. Fine, fine, Mike answered nervously. He didn't want his boss to know they were running short on laughs. That Christmas tree will be lit up in no time. Mike saw Sully peek over at the laugh meter. I bet there are a lot of kids who are, Sully started. No time to talk, buddy. Mike cut him off. He guided Sully toward the door. Got to get back to work and collect those laughs. Okay, said Sully. See you later. As soon as Sully left, Mike called out again. Let's go, let's go, collect those laughs. Christmas is just around the corner. The monsters worked even harder at being funny and entertaining. One monster even juggled seven plates and spun another plate on his head. The kid watching him broke into giggles and clapped wildly. The laugh canister quickly filled up. George, a big furry orange monster, went through another child's door. He sat on a stool next to the little girl's bed, holding a microphone in one hand. Hey, is this thing on? Hello? George said, tapping the microphone. Ready to have some laughs? Good. Why did the monster eat a light bulb? Why? the child asked. He needed a light snack, George exclaimed, and the little girl roared with laughter. Wait, wait, I have more. He told another joke that sent the child into giggles. On the laugh floor, Mike watched the canister outside the door fill up. Nice work, Mike said when George had finished. Thanks, George said. He and Mike looked up at the laugh meter on the wall. It was growing steadily, much to everyone's delight. We actually might make our goal, Mike said with a hopeful smile. All of a sudden, Mike and the other monsters watched in horror as the laugh meter began to go down instead of up. What's going on? What's happening? Mike said, his voice growing louder. The laugh wranglers, Smitty and Needleman, weren't sure. This has never happened before, said Smitty, the head wrangler. Well, don't just stand there, Mike cried. Fix it. The wranglers sprang into action. After a while, they discovered a leak in the laugh tank where all the laughs were stored. The monsters on the laugh floor were worried. They wondered if all their hard work had been for nothing. Ho, 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 came a cheerful voice. Mike looked up and saw Santa Claus walking onto the floor. Then he realized it was Sully dressed in a Santa suit. I'm just getting into the Christmas spirit, Sully explained. Then he looked around. It looks like I'm the only one. What's going on? Mike explained the problem. But I've got everything under control, Santa, er, Sully. I'm sure you do, Sully replied. I'm just going to see if there's anything I can do to help. Sully followed Mike into the basement of Monsters, Inc., where the Laugh Wranglers were hard at work. Everyone wanted to get the Laugh Tank fixed as soon as possible, and time was running out. The tree-lighted ceremony was only a few hours away, but the Wranglers couldn't agree on how to fix the problem. Anything I can do? Sully asked. One of the pipes that leads into the Laugh Tank has burst, explained Smitty. We need to tie it off, but none of our tools are strong enough to turn the pipe. Hmm, said Sully, scratching his head. Then Mike had a great idea. Why not actually tie it off? Since Sully was so strong, he could bend that pipe right into a pretzel shape. Sully was willing to give it a try. Mike stood by his side and coached him. It worked. The pipe stopped leaking. Mike and Sully headed back up to the laugh floor. All the monsters congratulated Sully. Mike wondered why no one was thanking him. It had been his idea after all. But there was no time to think about that now. We're back up and running, Mike announced. Let's make some laughs. All the monsters got to work. They knew they'd have to work extra hard to make up for all the lost laughs. Sully decided to jump in and help. Hey, we've only got a couple hours to get the tree lit, he said to Mike. Still dressed as Santa, Sully went through a child's closet door. When he came back onto the laugh floor, he looked up at the laugh meter on the wall. It was increasing, but slowly. We've got to make it, Sully whispered to Mike. Finally, the laugh meter was back up to the level it had reached before the leak. Sully looked at the clock on the wall and frowned. It was only 30 minutes until tree lighting. Suddenly, Sully had an idea. The only way we're going to make our laugh quota is to get some really over-the-top laughs. Mike nodded in agreement. We need a grand slam here, continued Sully. We need a special kind of monster. One with perfect timing, star quality, 
a natural at comedy, a one-eyed sensation. Mike realized what Sully was trying to do. He crossed his arms and shook his head. No, Sully, absolutely not. The Christmas tree lighting is only half an hour away, Sully told him. Come on, Mike, the whole city is depending on you. That was all Mike needed to hear. You're right, let's do it, he said. But you're coming with me. Sully and Mike went through a door together. Sully was still dressed as Santa, and Mike was dressed as an elf. To their delight, a little girl's sleepover was going on. Mike started with some of his best jokes. Hey, Sully, I've got to walk 25 miles to get home. Why don't you take a train, Sully asked, playing along. I did once, but my mother made me give it back, Mike said. The kids in the room laughed, but not as hard as the monsters had hoped. After a few more jokes, Mike realized he'd have to try something else. He picked up the sack of toys Sully had brought in, but it was far too heavy for him. Whoa, he exclaimed as he tripped. He landed upside down and the sack of toys spilled out around him. He sat up with a doll draped over his head and a toy race car stuck to his foot. The kids roared with laughter. They begged for more and Mike happily tumbled and tripped for them again. Mike and Sully made it back onto the laugh floor in time to watch the laugh meter hit its limit. At the tree lighting ceremony, Mike and Sully stood proudly in front of the crowd. Sully leaned over and whispered in Mike's ear, You did a great job, thank you. Mike smiled. You know what I always say, funny doesn't grow on trees. When you got it, you got it, and I got it. Sully laughed. He was happy Mike had it and shared it. It was going to be a bright Christmas after all.